in fact, uh, I'll ask this question first. What kind of notices or uh, will you be getting? And once you're served with a notice, what do you do? What's the first step? Well, f most first offenders are dealt with by way of a traffic infringement notice. Um, unless your reading is above 0.15, then you're required to go to court. That's a very high reading. That's three times the legal limit. Um, or if you're um, perhaps a probationary licence holder, mm -hmm. or if you're charged with other offences, careless driving or or excessive speed or other things, then you're sometimes required to go to court. Um, so they're, they're, um, they're the that's what happens. Most of them are dealt with by traffic infringement notices. If you've got a second or subsequent drink driving offence, then you are compelled to go to court. And the consequences then are much more serious, and that's where we break people like Tim, when our clients are very vulnerable at risk of imprisonment. Um, there's a correlation again between your reading, between your second reading, um, for instance, uh, um, if you're over 0.15, you can um, you can be subject to a term of imprisonment for up to 18 months. Tim, as I understand, that means there is a difference between traffic infringement notices and charges and summons. That's right. That's right. What's the difference? The, the difference is a traffic infringement notice, you simply pay it um, and you do your time off the road, whereas a, a charge and summons means you are summons to go to court and you have to attend before a magistrate um, and encourage uh, any person in that situation to engage professional uh, legal advice and engage a solicitor in respect to that. Um, but you are required to go before the court to explain what's happened and to justify why you should not get a jail term mm. um, or to e or, or to minimise the amount of time you might be off the road. Does that mean, Chen, that you could pay a fine off, uh, a pay off, or can you do community service and volunteer to do community service and get out of uh, the circumstances si the situation? Well, with relation to a traffic infringement fine, it's a monetary fine that you have to pay. However, um, if you do uh, go to court or if you are asked to go to court for a summons, um, there are options. You could, um, if you are, if you do receive a fine. Um, when you go to court, so the magistrate imposes a fine upon you, you could convert that fine into community work. Another way of that happening is if um, you go to court and then the magistrate orders that you do community work as part of your punishment. Um, so they're usually the ways where a community work element comes into it. So yes, you can um, convert the fine to community work, but only if it was ordered in the courts. I think one thing the viewers need to be very conscious of is that there's a much harder attitude towards drink driving offences. Um, there are a significant number of people in prison for doing nothing more than drink driving um, or driving whilst they're suspended. Um, you don't have to be an antisocial, violent person to, to get a term of imprisonment. So um, people need to be very cautious. They should get advice at a minimum. Um, if particularly if it's a second offence and if it's a high rating. So the sentences are not light. Then you well, end up no. in prison. You lose your liberty, um, and that has consequences for employment, family, and everything else. And I, I think I think Rob, you'd probably agree with your experience that you've seen over the years that the the message is getting through from the government to to a, to reduce the amount of drink driving offenders out there because. Um, nowadays, uh, your 0 0.15, 0 0.18 is a high reading. Mm. Yes. Well, it was fairly common yeah, 15, 20 correct. years ago, yeah. whereas most drink drivers nowadays tend to be about the 0 0.10, 0 0.12. Yeah. Um, so the message getting through, um, and hopefully that's been reflected in the road toll as well. Yeah, the, road, the, the government says um, we have a hard line on drink driving. We deal with people harshly. That sends a message to the broader community. If you drink and drive, there are serious consequence, consequences, not just loss of licence but the risk of imprisonment mm. um, and harsh financial penalties. There was a question, what if you don't drink and drive, but uh, at the same time, you just hold a bottle in your hand and drive? Is that possible? Um, you, you once upon you're a time- driving and drinking. Yes, you once, once upon a time you were permitted to, to drink alcohol while driving, but you're not allowed to do that. There's been mm. a, some legislative change that prohibits you from drinking alcohol whilst driving a vehicle. I don't think it requires uh, any mandatory suspension of licence, I don't think. No, it doesn't. Um, but um, it is now a separate offence. I've seen in the morning the traffic lights uh, and traffic queues, uh, especially women and some drink coffee and do other kind of stuff like doing makeups, uh, makeup. Where does the law stand there? Well, the law, s I, I think the law says You've got to drive like an ordinary, reasonable, and prudent driver. And if you if you drive erratically or or you deviate from your path or whatever it might be, 
it's possible you could be charged with careless driving. Mm. Mm. Um, and, and that's that's one of the elements. So if you don't um, take care of your actual driving, um, just because you're putting on makeup or drinking a cup of coffee, those things in itself may not be um, an element to charge you. But the result of your driving, um, if you cross the, the the yellow, the white lines or the solid lines, the police can indeed charge you with offences. That's mm. with careless driving. Exactly. Well, it's ca careless driving or even fail to keep yeah. a proper lookout. Um, uh, reverse changing and unsafe, lanes, um, changing lanes, it's yeah, a lot of so different things. So if people are distracted yeah. on the Eastern Freeway, for example, of a morning and they're, they're driving in the Eastern Freeway having a coffee or doing their makeup um, and the traffic moves and they go quickly and rear end somebody, um, it would be ordinarily careless driving or far to maintain a close It's Interesting, distance. what sort of penalties or sentences are we looking at for that kind of careless driving? It would ordinarily um, attract a fine, that would be, um, you're at most risk if you damage property um, or particularly if you injure someone mm. as a result of your bad driving. Yeah. Um, so that's, but ordinarily um, it would be a fine only in those circumstances. Where, where viewers have to be, um, or what, what they have to be aware of is that um, that fine could attract a conviction. Um, so p some people who might require a, a clean record or mm. to avoid convictions for the purpose of travel or for work purposes, um, but they're the circumstances they have to go before the court, not, not just try to ensure they get a low fine, and keep their license, but also try to avoid a conviction, so it doesn't, in, it doesn't impact on work yeah, or traffic. I think most people would think that a traffic offence um, is, is not a criminal conviction, but in fact it is. So um, it goes on your criminal record? It does go on your record. It doesn't impact upon your ability to hold political office or travel overseas or any of those things, but, but um, it is still part of a, part of a record. Mm. But am I correct to say if you have a criminal record, it is a crimi criminal record, can you start up, uh, do a start-up business? Uh, yes, effect? you're not you're not prohibited from holding a director's position or anything like that. So it's you not can't a, do a director's? Not an offence of dishonesty or, or anything of that nature, so it's, it, but it, it, nevertheless, it nevertheless remains a conviction. Can't emphasise the seriousness of uh, drink driving and the criminal uh, charges or the imprisonment issues that might come with it. I think that's sure. that's a major thing that we experience a lot in our firm. Um, we have a lot of um, Asian background um, individuals who come to our firm um, with first time drink driving or repeated drink driving because they're being served with a notice initially and then they do it again, you know, six months, 12 months down the line. And what they have to realise is in Victoria we have very draconian traffic laws. It's very, very strict liability. The penalties are very, um, very severe. And like Rob said, um, imprisonment is a distinct likelihood for second time or, or further. Um, and I think that's a message that needs to be conveyed, um, that the traffic infringements and the traffic laws and drink driving in Australia, in Victoria, are very, very serious offences. It's not just, you know, something where you pay a fine and, and that's it, it goes away.